Hello students! Glad you could join me for some virtual learning. In science, we're going to be starting a new lesson on pollination and seed dispersal, and that's why I wanted you to watch this video before our first lesson. That way you'll have the knowledge to complete the activities as well as not have to listen to me talk for forever, which I know is never fun. So, if you're ready, let's get down to learning! When you think of the word pollination, what is the first thing that pops into your head? Now it's okay if you don't know what this word means because that's what I'm going to teach you today. So when I think of the word pollination, I immediately think of flowers. And that's because pollination is the transfer of pollen from flower to flower to allow for fertilization, which fertilization is basically the making of seeds. So as you just learned from that definition, pollination involves flowers. So what about a flower allows it to be a part of pollination? Well, as you guys know, a flower has many parts to it, but today we are going to focus on the stamen, the stigma, and the pistil. You guys may have never heard of these parts before, but these three parts help with the process of pollination. Now, not all flowers have all three of these parts. Some flowers only have the stamen, which is the male part, and some flowers only have the pistil and stigma, which is the female part. Flowers that only have one of these parts are known as imperfect flowers, while flowers that have all three parts are known as perfect flowers. Perfect or imperfect, they both rely on pollination. So let's get back to the plant's parts. The stamen is the male part of the flower, and it's in charge of making the pollen. The stigma is a female part of the flower, and this is the area where the pollen is received. Finally, the pistil is also a female part of the flower, that is found in the center and produces the flower seeds so more flowers can grow. Now I know all those parts sound confusing, but when I explain the process and or steps to pollination, it will all make more sense. Now, I want you to recall the three parts you just learned because they are going to be mentioned here in a couple of seconds. But before we do that, let's review what pollination means one more time. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from flower to flower to allow for fertilization or the making of more seeds. So you guys have been hearing the word pollen a lot, and I bet you guys are wondering what pollen is. Well, pollen is the yellow powdery substance that causes plants to form their seeds. Are you seeing how all this is connecting? So pollination is taking that powdery substance from one flower and placing it onto another flower so it can make its seeds. It's really quite like magic. However, I'm going to explain the process of pollination using the three parts of the flower you just learned. So step one. Pollination begins in the stamen because that's where the pollen is made. Step two. The pollen is then transferred weight. Pollen can't magically end up on another flower. Something has to help it get it there. Hmm. What is something that is always around flowers? Oh, I know. Bees! Bees help transfer the pollen because when they land on the flower, the pollen sticks to the fuzz on the bee's body and legs. So, now that we know that, let's try step two again. So step number two. A bee comes along and lands on a flower, causing the pollen to stick to it, which allows the pollen to be transferred whenever the bee leaves. And step number three. The bee that's carrying the pollen then lands on the stigma, or area where the pollen is received, of another flower, and the process of pollination is complete. So after the stigma receives the pollen, it's able to use it to help the pistil create its seeds, which is important for creating more flowers. Now I know all this sounds kind of confusing, but when you think about it, pollination is kind of like the game of tag. You guys are all familiar with that game at recess, I'm sure. So the flower will be it or the tagger because it has the pollen. Then the bee will come along and land on the stamen of the flower, causing the pollen to stick to it, which will then make the bee it because it now has the pollen. So the bee will be flying around and then it'll come up to another flower and land on the stigma of this flower, giving the stigma the pollen, which will cause this flower now to be it since it has received the pollen. In this game of tag goes back and forth between the flowers and the bees. Make more sense now? 
So the flower is it because it has the pollen. The bee comes along and the flower tags the bee with the pollen, so now the bee is it. And the bee flies along and lands on another flower, giving his pollen to this flower, causing this flower now to be it. Now I know we are only focusing on flowers for this lesson, but I want you guys to know that pollination occurs in all plants. Trees, crops, bushes, all plants need pollination because as we learned at the beginning, pollination allows for fertilization or the making of seeds, which helps more plants to form and grow. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I learning about this? Well, pollination is extremely important to our environment. We rely so much on plants, not only to help us breathe and create oxygen, but to help make food and different products that we rely on every day. Without pollination, we wouldn't have paper or paper towels because trees wouldn't be able to grow. We also wouldn't have wheat, corn, tomatoes, fruits, or vegetables because they need to be pollinated to grow. And we also wouldn't have any meat because without having the wheat and corn, the animals would have nothing to eat. So now you see why pollination is so important? It allows us to have everything that we rely on. So next time you see a bee, make sure to thank them because they help make our world go round. Well class, that's the introduction to our unit on pollination and seed dispersal. Be ready for some fun activities. I'll see you later.